And we are live. It says we're live. It See? takes about 30 that seconds. Was painless. Tack. Give it a second to register as always. My phone says we're live. So we are live. We're live. We're live. We got eight people watching. What's up, everybody? I'm doing, I'm doing the pop out chat. We're live. She's she's doing all sorts of stuff. Hey Bryce, thank you, Bryce. All right. Katrina, drinking these. We have heads up FPV here. What's up, dude? What's up, guys? I am excited to be on the show. This is uh, definitely something out of my comfort zone doing a live podcast. Hopefully, my internet doesn't fail. And if it does, I apologize in advance. You have the link, so it's nice because you just join back in if it drops out on you. Yeah, perfect. Damn. And it's not a scary interview. We're we're laid back and relaxed. It's just you can't take back what you say because it's on the internet forever. So <laughs> I don't expect anything bad from you, though. So I think we're going to get right into it because it's a school night. And I know you've got stuff to do. I've got work to do still. So did you get a Tango 2 from Trappy? Because I was told that everyone got one. So I wondered if he sent you one. I did not, no. Um, my dad, so my dad is, I'd say, a bigger FPV guy than I am. He buys all the newest stuff. He can't help to not have the newest stuff. So his gets here tomorrow. Um, I'm cool. sponsored by Spectrum, so I use like the Spectrum, the IX12 and stuff like that. So I, I, I can't really use the Tango. But my dad, he has no obligations. So he, yeah, he splurged. Hopefully my mom doesn't find out. And he got him one of those. Uh, the Tango twos. So it'll get here tomorrow. I'm excited to see it. Really, I really am. It looks as you, Jake's got his obviously. Uh, we were talking about it before the show, but I, I think it looks really good. They had some really awesome ideas and concepts. So I'm I'm excited to play with it. We're going to a race this weekend, and I'm sure my dad will mess with it there. My favorite part about it right here. I'm, oh yeah, no. it's so weird. I think it's really it awesome. <laughs> you're hilarious. Jake, your nose is a little brown from, you know, your your fanboy shirt and your fanboy remote and all your live videos and <laughs> all your TBS loving that you've been doing. And yeah, <laughs> just wipe it off. It's okay. Oh, that's great. So you can't use the radio regularly. Is there any products that you feel like you're missing out on that you wish you could be using? Well, I am... I very like I like to mess with anything that's new. Like I'm very like, like tech oriented. Uh, I'll show you guys my charger box over there in a second. I can glowing in the back. Uh, I love tech. But um, ever, I, I can't think. Am I lagging uh, or is it him lagging? I think he's lagging actually. Oh no, you're lagging hard. You were I'm just gone. like, I think. Oh no, the lag is real. I mean, at least we know nobody gets to escape the lag. I totally thought this was my uh, my computer wonky up, wonky up. Yeah, I wasn't sure. That's why I'm like, should I ask? Is this me or is this you or is this him? <laughs> we'll see what happens with this thing here. He might have to join back in. Cause he's still frozen. I feel like this is a typical Wednesday beginning of the month kind of thing to happen. Right. <laughs> oh my gosh. Gonna, I hope he comes back. Oh, there he goes. I'm seeing if re-adding him helps. <laughs> Tony, <laughs> Tony's good. Oh man. Oh. That, that's a good joke. I accept that joke. Oh, he dropped right out. Oh, well, he'll come back. I know he's going to come back. Yeah, he says it's me lagging. I'm trying to get it fixed. All right, well, while well, he's working on it, um, why don't you talk a little bit more about your favorite remote ever? I don't... Okay, he's back. Oh, good. He's back. Oh, that was okay, quick. Sorry. I, I, I called it. I think we're good. We got it out of the way early. We got the lag out of the way early. <laughs> <laughs> At least you know how to go in now. And yeah, Tony made a good joke. Tony good. says you're too slow. He thought you were fast. So. <sighs> yeah. Oh, yeah. That was rough. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, sorry. You were saying what What did you wish that you could be using that you can't be using? Like something in the um, industry. No, I, I, so I, 
I was saying that I love tech and things like that, and um, I, I would love to test everything that's brand new and out um, if I could. Uh, I do have sponsors, and like the way sponsorship works, especially with like what I'm doing with Five Three Three now, I'm starting to understand more how that all works. But um, like I, I have sponsors, and I'm, I'm obligated to use their stuff. So like with Spectrum, for example, I use their radio. They helped me and they support me a lot, so it's my job to support them back. So I did not ask for one. I didn't receive a, a Tango 2 or anything. Um, but yeah, it's. I mean, it, that's an interesting question uh, because there's, of course, some things that I like, oh, that looks really cool, but I, I won't be able to use it because I'm obligated to use other things. But um, at the end of the day, I always choose the sponsors that I use their stuff for a reason, and I know their stuff is tried and true. And um, so, yeah, there, there might be some cool things here and there that come out that I wish I could uh, use maybe, but I, I have a setup that I'm really happy with that, that I, I can't complain about. Uh, the support my sponsors gave me, I, I can't complain about that at all. Awesome. That's awesome. So, just okay. Let's let I before we get to the sponsor questions because those are those are kind of touchy. I want to know why you're sponsored. What what what's going on there? How, how what do you do? What do you do, man? What do I do? As okay, so let's see. So I, for those who don't know who I am, um, I I race I race drones five inch. I um, Five inch quads from multi GP and from the US. And I've been racing for about four years now, flying quads. Um, so and it's crazy to think that means I'm an OG in this industry that I've been doing this for four years. But um, um, so I've been flying for about four years. I started racing. Um, I have actually been an RC for over 10 years now. So since I, I'm 16 um, and I'm from since Tennessee. You, since you were six? Yeah, since I was six years old, I've been. Uh, wow. An RC. So I, I've always had a little controller in my hand, always doing something like that, always uh, messing around. And then about four years ago, like I said, is when uh, we started doing quads. And um, yeah, so I started doing quads. And going back to your question of what I, I do, obviously go to a bunch of races and events and stuff. Um, and then I, it's my job to support them and represent them in a positive manner. So like, and I started to learn this uh, a lot, like I was saying about, especially with running 533, which is like my my own thing that I'm doing now with like frames and motors and stuff. It's like when you sponsor a pilot, you want them to go because you can't go to every single race so you or event. You want them to go there, wear your shirt. And if somebody has an issue with your product because no one makes perfect stuff, is you want that, you want it to, them to positively like show off your product. Even if other people are having issues, you want them to be the first person to go out there and give them a free one just to replace it. You know that I'll, I'll help them back out. You know, it doesn't matter, but nice. you just want, so my job is from my sponsors, I need to positively represent them to where I, that means I need to be good on race days. I mean, it, it's not even like, because I get all these people asking me for sponsorships now saying like, I've won this race, this race, this race, and I've beat X, X, and X person. And like, that's great and all. We do love pilots who have good finishes, but we also want the, the personality. And I think that's key for sponsorships in general. And that's, uh, I, like you said, it's a touchy subject um, because a lot of people, that's everyone wants that. It's the first thing like, oh, I get a sponsor in this. And everybody, I, I get questions all the time about how I can get one. Maybe not just from me, but or from the company, but just um, other companies in general. They're not, you don't have to be the the fastest or the best freestyler hit the craziest gap to get a sponsorship it's like they're just looking for like positive um representation on social media at races and things like that and then that helps them out because if you're the guy who goes out and it's a guy everyone likes and just wants to hang out with because they're nice and want to help you out and make sure you always have props and arms and motors then hopefully they'll go back and support that company that supports them in return because they know that it helps them out so yeah, I mean, I, I have um, I have some sponsors, and I I mean, I've had the sponsors for a few years now. Now that I've been able to like sponsor myself essentially with five through three, and um, yeah, it's it's been a it, I don't really know. It's just I it's my job to positively represent all these companies, and they help me out in return. Okay. See, I think that's important because you clearly just highlighted a big issue with sponsorship in the industry right now. And that's everyone wanting handouts and everyone going, yeah. what can you do for me? Not so much. How can you help the community and the actual experience grow and better be better for everyone? Yeah. True. So it's, I think you're a, thinking of it a, a given. way more mature way. Uh oh, 
Uh oh. Did we lose him again? I think we did. Oh, it's going to be a rough night. What? Look at the fanboy hat goes back on. What? Every time he drops, you're like, I got to get my nose brown again. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I'm not. This I'm is, not going to stop picking on you for it. God, care. honest, even if this thing had a Teletubby on it, this is the most comfortable hat I've ever had. Vampire's right. That's jokes. I don't care that that joke's been made. It's hilarious. That one's pretty damn good. I like it, Vampire. Va is it Vampire or Vampire? There's no E. I, uh. <laughs> hey, Kim. How's it going? Kimbo's actually, Kimbo's cool. Kimbo was at a multi-GP rate, or not, was it multi-GP? I think so. Um, it was the uh, rat race event in Ontario. <laughs> I'm just reading these comments. Oh, my God. Oh. Speaking, of, this is great. Tack, when are you coming on the show, man? Like, not like you haven't done 100 interviews, but oh shit, maybe I shouldn't say it because Rollins is here and then he'll interview you next week. Right? No, I think, he, <laughs> no, I think he's already done that. I think he's done Tack already. He'll do a round two. <laughs> yeah, is he good? <laughs> Rollins is like, is he good? I don't know. We'll give him a sec to see if his lag cuts, but Rollins is like, yeah, we can just roll through his regular, we'll just put his interview on the screen and just there we go, pretend it's us. We don't edit our shit, man. <laughs> yeah, Kimbo. So Kimbo's right. It was a multi GP event. I wasn't sure. Uh, he, Kimbo made into his switch back yesterday. The quad flew great. Evan will be back. He might have to go on data on his phone or something. What? I'm so confused. Let's see here. We'll give him a few minutes and see if we can get it working here. I sure hope so. We miss you already. I know. We have all these great questions and like ideas. I have I actually have some some humdingers as they'd say. Flying with Paco last night. I don't know who Paco is, Corey Mano. I hope that doesn't make me a bad person. Please. And he's say back? That. He has no sound. I hear no him. Oh, I hear it now. It's got like a lag to it. Hello? Hello. Hello. Perfect. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. My internet is crazy inconsistent, as you can tell. Usually not this bad, but hopefully it, it levels out. It's just our luck. That's yeah. why that's why live interviews are hard, because it's like we don't know what's yeah. gonna happen. It's just you just go with it, right? Yeah, exactly. But I'm going to try. I had the stream open that I was playing on the backside, so I'm not going to have that open anymore. So I'm hoping maybe we have a little bit better connection now. A little bit better connectivity. Yes. So um, so everyone is saying they love the switchback. That's the okay. comments you've been missing. Okay, great. Kimbo said he made into his yesterday and it flew great. Awesome. Um, <laughs> Vicious Vice said everyone go buy the switchback so he can get better internet. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> That's it's hilarious. Not, it'll be in stock soon. It'll be in stock soon. What stores are going to be carrying it? So that's I'll I'll jump in because I'm sure this will be a, a, a bigger question down the road. So I'll go ahead and explain what 533 is. So 533 is the company. I'll, I'll go even further back. So let's see. So I, saw, I wanted to uh, make my own frame. This was a while back. This was six to eight months ago, I'd say now. And I was going to work with a, a pretty big company that's pretty well known in the industry. Just say um, their name. Come on. The, uh, I won't go into which company that is, but um, I was going to go and do, into a frame with them and they were going to produce it and it was going to be no work on my side. It's like, we can get the design done with the person I'm about to introduce, whatever, but, um, and then they were going to make it and sell it through their site, et cetera. So I decided that I was going to do it through myself. So it's me and, um, my good friend Armando, 
He is a uh, an aerospace engineer. He's a super super smart guy. He's been um, he's done a bunch of really really crazy things as far as um, making like airplanes and things like that, which is really cool. And he's actually my fleet manager per se. And I heard you you were saying that your quads were all broken and whatnot. And how yeah, they are. That. It's great. So he <laughs> I have a, a fleet manager and. So I, he builds all my quads, he fixes all my quads, and then he ships them to me. But on top of that, he's, we're, we're definitely business partners. So this, it started out as just him building and stuff, my quads. And then he said that he had some frame ideas and I had some, and then we ended up working together. And then we ended up with the switchback. And so then we decided that we were going to split off from this company and do it ourselves. And um, Serge Merchilling from Pyro actually is the one who um, convinced me to do it per se. He just, he was like, you know, it'd be because I'm 16. I, I'm not experienced. I haven't ever started a business or anything like that. And he said it'd be a good idea to just try it. So the original idea was I was going to, um, oh yeah, that that's, I can tell that guy's from Canada. He bought 22 switchbacks, 30 arms, ready to race. Um, thank you guys. Um, but he, um, so we split off from this company and we were going to do it ourselves. So Going back to your question of where it's sold, it's only sold on our site, which is fly533.com. Um, and so fly533, and the five is spelled out, F-I-V-E. I know it's, it's, it's confusing. I'm sorry. I will put the link in the description at the end, kind of okay. when I go back and edit the video, so don't worry. I so think I got awesome. it right. People will be able to find it that way too. Great. But yeah, so we decided that we were essentially going to open up a hobby shop, which didn't. it wasn't exactly what we were going for at the very beginning. Yeah, that Jake uh, got it right. Um, and, um, so now I, to my left or to you guys, right, I guess I have all of 533's inventory. Um, and it's our little shop that we have that we run down here. So, um, yeah, I'm, we, myself and Armando run the business all by ourselves. We don't have any retailers. We actually have a EU warehouse. So, uh, we, the frame was introduced in Turkey at the WDC, which was like the world drum cup in Turkey, which was a big race over there. And all these people from all over the world wanted it. So we were like, man, what's the best way that we can get it over to, uh, to Europe and not go through a retailer? Because we wanted to, obviously, if you don't go through a retailer, you can have better profits and things like that. And we just wanted to be different. So we, we were going for the, the small business vibe, I guess you could say. And so we opened it up. We had a, a site, Matt Hill, he'll probably watch this. And he, uh, he is a local guy to me that I helped out a while back. And he is a web developer. So he's helped us out a lot with the website. Um, because our webs, our business is entirely ran by a website. So, um, and yeah, you see it up in the top right. There is the website. The switchback. We have motors. We sell props. We sell the heads of FPV props on there. So, are um, these all only things you guys have designed, or are yes. you selling other things too? Well, yeah. So this is all stuff that has come through me or Mondo. So we have those are the new motors we just dropped, which are let's see, I have a quad right here that's all built up. So this is the, the switchback we have. Um, so this is the, it's a race frame it, um, and it's got all these really cool features and whatnot that um, you can find in videos all over the internet. Um, and then we, yeah, just those new motors that you're looking at now, but those are the, these are the 533 motors we just came out with. We have the heads of FPV props from HQ that we sell. So really we, we wanted the, the, the goal behind this all was that we wanted to, um, have like a one-stop shop. So the an issue I felt was that, and everyone always talks about this with with FPV. It's like there's it's really hard to get into because it feels like there's so many options. There's so many things you can get to. There's not much information. So the idea behind this was to be like, well, if you want to get into racing or freestyle, you can go on here, and there's not 50 different motors to pick from. There's one motor you can pick from, and we know that this motor is a motor that we can recommend to anyone. It's uh, it's a 6s motor. It works on 5s, 4s. And it's something we can recommend to anyone. They come onto this site. They don't have to pick in which state or KV, weight, color, whatever. They have one option. And in the same way for frames, motors, cameras. And I mean, this is all in the future down the line is that we want it to be a shop to where anyone can come on. And if they want to build a quad, they don't have to scroll through all these cameras and find this one or that one or this one. They just have their two options. Maybe they like Foxy or maybe they like Run Cam. And they can just click, click, and then order that. And we haven't gotten that far yet. So right now we're, we've only been open for two or three months now. And uh, so we have the motors, frames, and props now, as well as like, 3D prints and such. Um, yeah, 608 all, wants you to throw it at the wall so he can see how good it, it is. Throw it at the wall. <laughs> Might hit something expensive. Uh, 
Yeah, I'll, we'll, we'll say that for later in the show. Uh, oh, <laughs> we will come back to that now. Okay, okay. I didn't, tax, I didn't realize taxes. that my screen was still up, and I'm over here like, is he going to do it? Yeah. <laughs> tax says he wants one, but you can't tell Fly no. Yes, we are happy to give to give Tack one. He just has to race. Tack is a local guy to me. There you go. And he is, you know, I, I love Tack. Tack's an awesome guy. And he I, I wanted to race, race didn't he so bad. And I told him he had his own frame, his own motors and everything. <laughs> just give me the address. But he's got to go to a race. We're going We're going to a race this weekend. He's probably, he, who knows, he went to the Tiny Whoop race. Does that not yes. count? I told him that didn't count. We don't have any 533 Tiny Whoops yet. Maybe, maybe that's something <laughs> we're doing. But he needs to go to a five-inch race. I think he'd be really good. Uh, for those who've watched tax videos, he's obviously a really, really good pilot and fun to watch fly. He seems um, humble too, which is nice. Like no, a yeah, nice no, he, person, right? Him and his son are both really, really awesome people. I, I think I, I feel like I could hang out with Tack and have a good time. Oh yeah, no, Tack's an awesome guy. Double A. Uh, uh, this friend's going to be the premier racing frame like the philosophers a couple years ago. I really hope it is, man. We uh, we've had a couple votes and things like that, or like on Facebook. We haven't put them up. Um, but the switchback is done really, really um, well with uh, as far as sales. So I couldn't be happier with how um, how well it's sold and whatnot. Um, now, do you race these ones when you race? Do you race? Do you use these products, exact products, when you race? Oh yeah. So that and that was the idea. Is like I don't want to rely on like other companies and stuff to to give me things. And like I, I really thought it was a cool idea with this. And that's why I went with my own company aside uh, to make this frame. For example, start it all uh, off. And it was if I wanted to go to an event and hand out a frame, I didn't want to asked for like x company just like oh can i have one more action we gave one or i gave i'm not actually i gave one away and this person who needed one or whatever it's just i wanted to be the, the very top and if i want to go to a race and somebody breaks a frame i'm happy to give them one like you know it's i want to i want to be the top of where i could support anyone i wanted to that i felt was a good fit i don't want to ask anyone else oh we should sponsor this person etc cetera, etc cetera. now would you give van over a frame if he was racing you and it was the only oh, chance that he had to compete against you change. this is where personal goes in between in business so right? from a business standpoint that is a great great deal for me because i would i'd love for vanover to find a frame it'd be great and and i me and vanover both talked he's more than welcome to find the switchback i'll give him a discount code if he wants it but um oh he'll get a discount but tax is the code. free one i like yeah, it gets, uh, tax cooler than vanover in my opinion tax <laughs> really cool guy. Uh, <laughs> i like it oh. i like it <laughs> um but yeah no i it, it's really been cool for me because i've had to, to learn how to separate the the business side from like the personal side because it's like well, like I might not like said person very much, or whatever, but they have a huge social media, or they have this or that, or whatever, and it'd be really good for my business because I know they have a good name in the industry, etc. So Vanover, for example, me and him are we're, we're great friends. He was over at my house just a couple weeks ago um, when we were practicing back here, and it, like just that, for example, he flies other frames, does other sponsors, and whatnot. But if he needed a frame, if you look at it from a business standpoint, it'd be a really good option for him to, to for us to sponsor him. Uh, <laughs> And so, yeah, if, to kidding. answer your question, um, I I would give Van over frame if I were racing against him. All right. If he made what a post. If, if he made a post. What if it was now like the DRL championship and it's you versus him? Would you still give him a frame to keep him in the race? I would because I know he wouldn't be used to it and I know I'd be very used to it. I like and that. There's a good okay. chance that um, we'd get one, two, and then that'd look really good if we got first and second with the frame. So I, no, no matter how much money's on the line, I, yeah, I, I, I like to be the, and I know it doesn't, it's bad for my profit and things like that. It's like, I, I really like to be the person who is happy to help that one person out who, cause there's always a person at the race and um, who like breaks their quad and can't fly and like, Oh, here, take mine, just fly this, whatever. And it's just, as far as like a business standpoint, if you look at it, it's like, oh, you're just giving away money or this, that, and the other. Like that could be profit, x, etc. It's like, and it's I I look at it more as you're. It's like a relationship with the customer. Is you want to have that personal relationship with them, and they might not have to buy something from you for you to support them. It's just if they seem like a good person and they're being a positive, happy person, and they don't, they just can't afford it because x, y, and z reasons. Then I see no reason that I shouldn't support them, whether or not they have a hundred thousand followers or zero followers on Instagram. It's just as long as I want them to have the best time in the hobby and in the industry, um, and just to have fun, and that's what FPV is all about. So I really, uh, and even if it is 
Vanderbilt, who is perfectly capable of beating you in my own frame or my own quad. I like to, uh, it'd be from, like I said, from the business uh, perspective, it's a really good decision for me to help someone else like that. And there's, you'll never get bad PR from giving someone free stuff or helping someone out. So that's my perspective. Well, you'll get bad PR if you give free stuff to the wrong kind of people. That That is but. true. That is true. Um, however, I think if you, if it's on a, a, a case by case basis and you have good judgment, then I think it can, uh, it can, it, it can only do good things for you for the most part. And some people might be like, Oh, you gave him something free, but not me. And it's, and I can't give free stuff to everyone. I really wish I could. And if I could, I would. Um, no, but, but that's how you go bankrupt. Yeah. yeah <laughs> uh, yes. Um, but yeah, it's a case by case basis thing. And, uh, I really like to, I want people to have the most fun possible in the industry. And, um, hopefully that comes back to, and like I said, it's like a sponsorship. It's a give and take type thing. So exactly. if, I give you something or whatever. I would hope that maybe you'd recommend the product to someone else and then you can sell one in return or get one for yourself if you need a spare or something and just uh, show appreciation for both both ways. And I think that most people understand that it's a mutual relationship. So, um, how does yeah, your dad feel about all this? Like, was sorry? your dad really supportive of all this or is he kind of like you should focus on school or is he kind of <laughs> like drop out and do drones for a living? No, so both my parents, um, are doctors so they're in the medical field they're highly educated um and that is um it's so that obviously school is very important to them and it, as it should be it's like education is very important and although <laughs> drone racing might be fun and stuff i can't um i can't go out and just go out on my own right now and live and just stop drone racing and um so yeah it's uh i've definitely had to find a way to balance all this and whatnot uh, my dad actually got into FPV and RC in general with me way back uh, 10 years ago when I started. And so he's always been there. He's always been the one where I'm sleeping in the back of the car and he's driving a race or a event for planes and whatnot. And so he's been super, super supportive. My whole family has. And, um, but yeah, he, um, the, the entire business was, it's obviously not free to start a business. You had to do prototyping of all this stuff. Yeah, no, it's not cheap at all. Things. And that's all been through myself. That's been my own bank account that I've saved up money through racing and sponsors and things like that. Um, so he, he's seen how I've spent my money. Um, and he, he's obviously, he, he doesn't like to take risks. And this was obviously a risk in itself for sure. Um, so I definitely had to argue back and forth with him and my mom and whatnot about, oh, do you want to do this? Do you really want to? And, and at the end of the day, it is a risk, yeah. Um, but I think it's something like the things I can learn from this business or just life like this in general is uh, things that I can never learn in high school or learn in a in a class. Um, so it was a risk I was happy to take, and they are de they're definitely supportive. They're always down here. My when our motors came in and we had all these pre orders, my mom and my brother and whatnot were down here helping pack orders and stuff and get them out to the post office. So they're definitely um, super supportive, and I, I couldn't ask for a more supportive family. Rollins wants to know how many times your dad's freaked out over your business. Uh, I think my mom's had more nervous breakdowns about it than my dad. So my mom is, uh, we'll call her like my bookkeeper. So she deals with all the taxes and whatnot. So um, she thinks the FBI will show up at her door at any time and they very well could. However, we, we've done all the correct uh, things as far as the taxes side. Um, but yeah, she's always been, uh, anytime we spend a dollar or receive a dollar, she's like, oh, is it taxed by where? And then, of course, we I had to make it more complicated by going through the um, the European distributor. We have that European warehouse over in Germany. Um, and then she has, there's like VAT taxes. So we've I've had to meet with multiple accountants and lawyers and things like that about how to make that, make sure we're doing it completely legal. But I definitely say my dad has kind of stepped back and let my mom handle it. And let my mom be the one who's stressed more than my dad has. So, but it's going good now. My mom, we just had one of the final meetings with the accountant. We're all good now, which is great. Um, so hopefully mom can breathe again, which, which is great. <laughs> Eventually, as she sees it doing well, right? Do you find yeah. it's hard to keep up with school when you're doing all these things? So, yeah. And so um, this last semester, so from August of last year to like Christmas, I was homeschooled and I, I obviously traveled a lot through DCL and like other races that I went to. So I was traveling all the time. So I made the decision to go into like a homeschooling program where I did it online. And that definitely made it easier to keep up, especially because I was gone like twice a month or something for like going across the country and going across the world. For And it's just, it would have been impossible for me to have done it with uh, 
been in the public school because I've been in the public school system my entire life. Um, but this was just a, a thing that I did in um, last semester. So I'm back in school now in the public school system. And uh, it's been kind of an off season for FPV for, for, for right now, um, as far as like the racing side, just because it's cold and everybody's just taking a break, I'd say, after nationals. Um, but yeah, I've, I've been able to like balance my class load. Uh, luckily, I took a bunch of like super, super challenging classes earlier in my uh, high school career, I guess you could say. Um, so now I, since I got a lot of the harder ones out of the way at the beginning, I can kind of spread out the rest of the hard ones over these last two years of high school, which has made it a lot easier. Um, but yeah, it's, it's definitely something I, I'm definitely never bored. I, I always have something going on with the business, whether that's like all these new orders coming in or PayPal shuts down, the website goes down, you know, all these things I'm never bored. And then on top of that, um, you know, keeping up with school, um, like I said, my parents are both doctors, so school is very important to them. And uh, so, yeah, I have I to. I like how you say to, them, not you, yeah. to them. No, I, no, I, I 100% agree with them. And I, they've obviously worked hard to get their education and it paid off uh, for them being able to get to be doctors and whatnot. So, um, yeah, I, I definitely understand uh, why it's important. So I, I try and uh, do my best. I, I, I make good grades and whatnot like that um, because I know that it, it's important to get into colleges and things like that. And because FPV. Oh, oh no. we oh, lost no. him, but it's such a good point. No! <laughs> Straight gone. Oh. What horrible timing. He was on such a good roll there. Oh, good, he's back. Okay, okay, I'm back. I don't know what, I, my dad might have reset the router. But what That's I was okay, saying, you were doing so good. You were like at this like peak of a good roll and it's just like gone. Yeah, yeah, oh my goodness. Okay, so I'm back. <laughs> um, obviously, yeah, so back to like going into college, FPV isn't something that I can, live off of forever and whatnot. And obviously when I'm 60 years old and can't be a, a racer or whatever and uh, have a family to take care of and stuff that an education is important to be able to get other jobs and other businesses and whatever I end up doing, I'm not really sure what I end up doing. Um, I but feel it, like you could be a racer and you'll just be racing in like a mobile, like vehicle of some sort instead. Yes. <laughs> It'll probably be me and Vanover and like the the over sixty races in the, the <laughs> yeah, a whole new class yeah. of the over sixties. They do it for oh, motocross. Yeah. They they have the seniors for motocross. Yeah, hey, there that's you go. It'll be me and Vanover. I'm telling you, it's, <laughs> that's awesome. So, do you work then too, or are you just your work is more kind of like what you're doing with drones? So yeah, so five three three is uh, so that that's a business that I run full time. So that is I. Um, and I, I'm lucky. I'm lucky enough to get um, some backing uh, financially from sponsors and things like that. It's like a side gig, and then as well as the um, the business is like that's something I run full time. Obviously, to uh, the the end goal is to make profit, and that's something we do. We've sold. Uh, I, I'm not. I can't. I'm not reading the chat right now, but we we sold a lot of uh, switchbacks and motors and things like that. So we've been able to make some money and. All my friends are when after school they go to Kroger or Taco Bell or whatever to work, and I go home and start packing orders and go off to the post office and answering customer service messages and everything like that. And so yeah, it's definitely my my job, I guess you could say. And uh, I think it's been a really good experience because it's, all the other kids, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah, completely different, and they're all jealous because they they want to do whatever what I do, and they don't realize how not easy it is, I guess you could say, uh, to be able to do all this. Um, yeah, it's it's definitely something that I could. I'm super super fortunate to be able to do is to like leverage my position and start this company and um, to yeah have it successful. And I couldn't thank I I, ha, I I can thank so many people for how it's been successful and whatnot. Um, but I couldn't be happier with how um, with how it's all going. Oh, that's awesome. So about your actual racing career, what started that off? So I've always been a super, super competitive person. Um, I, um, as like, even like in like six year old, like soccer, like I was always like super physical, like wanted to get the most goals, Mario Kart. I like, I went, I grew up really breaking I, legs on the field, right? Yeah. Yeah. I love the competition and I it really, that all started in, um, RC airplanes. Like I was saying, so I actually competed in, um, RC airplane competitions for like years and years, ever since I was like, I think 10. So that was six years ago. And I did that for a really, really long time. And I think, so the thing that I won the IO World Cup, and that was 2017, um, that was the same year I won the world championships for airplanes. 
So I uh, was I did airplanes a lot. I was able to be successful with that. And then quads started to become more popular, and it was really fun. Since I and then it was just fun to uh, switch it up. You know, I've been doing planes since I was just a little kid, and it was fun to uh, mix it up and do quads. And what do you uh, think of the transition though from you know line of sight airplanes to quads. Well, I definitely think uh, of it as, as as an advantage. Um, if you go back and look at like the top ten, say quad pilots now are racing, for example, most most of them have an RC or line of sight background. So like. Min Chan Kim, for example, comes from helicopters, and I've seen pictures of him holding a radio that literally looks bigger than he is when he has a he's flying a little helicopter. And then, like <laughs> Van Over, for example, he comes from flying planes, and the chief Alex Campbell, he comes from flying planes. And I met Alex Campbell actually like eight years ago through flying planes. So as far as the transition, like I, I do think of it as an advantage to just as a little kid to be holding that remote and just have that muscle memory already built up to know exactly how to hold it, and that takes away that learning curve of having to, to, to learn how. Because, I mean, you might not think about it now, but, like, learning how to hold the remote and, like, find the best, most comfortable way was probably something that took you a, a while to learn and what was most comfortable and things like that. I'm going to have to have that it right now. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, but to have that advantage, I, I think of it as just uh, something that I was fortunate enough to have started doing when I was a little kid, and now it's – grown into having a competitive, not a competitive advantage, but I started earlier and now I have uh, a little bit of an edge on the other guys, I think. Oh, that's awesome. Good to know. Good to know. I'm just reading some of the comments too. What was your first quad? I might have it somewhere. Who gets rid of their first quad? Well, the, so I, I actually, I know exactly where it is. I know exactly where it is. It is, uh, we had this little um, kid and he came out and he wanted to start flying, whatever. So he has my first quads because I gave him my first quad because he wanted to get into flying and stuff. So, did you at it, least sign it for him first? So, when you're all big and famous, it's worth more to him? Yeah, I, I don't know. It, it's probably all dinged up now, but, um, but yeah, <laughs> that's, so that's awesome. where my first quad is, uh, is at this kid's house and he flies and he loves it. Um, but it's, it's not broken, it still works. Um, but it was a ZMR 250. It had sunny sky, 2204, 2300 kV motors. I think it was on three cell. Had this bit, it was on PPM, so it had the big receiver out the side. With like oh, no. These, it was bad, but that was my very first quad, and I absolutely loved it. My dad says, show them the tricopters. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I made it that way for you. I'm like, here, you'll see it now. <laughs> dad pops in and says, show them. He also says to throw it against the wall, the other quad, so we can see how strong it is. Okay. So I might have to back up out of frame here. What on earth is that? Yeah, wow. <laughs> so my dad started flying multi-rotors way before I did. And this is before anyone started flying multi-rotors. So I'll show you something interesting. So here's the, the flight controller here. And if you look closely, this wow. little thing right here, that's from a Wii nunchuck. Like, for, I don't know if you know, like a Wii, like from the Wii, yeah. like the little thing so that is a cracked open nunchuck you see this you still got the gimbal so we have a gimbal on the quad and uh, because they needed the accelerometers and gyros out of those to make it fly so there is i remember i really wanted a wii and i wanted another nunchuck and I, my dad went and got me a nunchuck i was super excited but he, he got an extra and i was like dad we don't need another one um and then he got a hammer and just cracked it open and then he started pulling it apart and i was freaking out but yeah, it was to take out the components. You can see his uh, soft mounting technique. It's foam with tape on there. So the first I soft mounting the tape. Controller. I absolutely love the tape. No gummies required. Um, but yes, <laughs> That's this one, awesome. That first. is definitely a relic you should never get rid of. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It hangs. We've got all kinds of things that look similar to that. Um, that one actually, so before anyone really knew what drones was, this had to be like eight years ago. Um, he would dangle on Halloween. He would dangle um, like a skeleton from it. And ha he had it lit up with all these lights. I don't know if you saw the lights that were on it, but there were lights. And then he would dangle skeletons. And people were just, if you've never seen a drone before, like it just had to be so, so, so confusing. Like people didn't even know what it was. But it was just this little helicopter that could fly around this little skeleton on Halloween. And we, we live in a, a popular neighborhood for trick or treating and whatnot. So we, I still remember that and all the uh, the kids freaking out about that, which I thought was funny. So your dad kind of like actually pioneered drones in a way. In a way, yeah. So he, he um, and the, the story he tells people is that, so when, I, as I told you, I'm very competitive and we both got into it at the same time as far as RC. 
and I was not going to let my dad be better than me at this. So every single day when I got home from like second grade or whatever it was, I would get on the simulator and I would just practice like nonstop, sit there and just not stop practicing. Um, and then, so I got better than him faster than he got uh, better. So then his, he, he didn't like that because he didn't have time because he was at work and stuff. Um, um, so like he went time. and decided he was going to be good at this whole quad thing because there was a, an old engineer in our club and um, he started doing these multi rotors. We didn't know what he was talking about, but it was just these drones or whatever. And he started doing that and that's where that all came from. And so he could be better than me at something. That's awesome though. So yeah, what's your favorite fun. sim since you brought simming up? Um, so the, the sim I was referring to for planes was the, um, what's it called? Um, that was real flight. So that was, and that's a really popular airplane simulator that, everyone uses there. Um, as far as like drone sims, I've obviously tried every which one. I've used Velocity Drone, Liftoff. Um, the one I've been doing most recently is the DRL sim because the, the whole tryouts are going on right now. Yeah. So everyone's on there. And then of course, me and my friends, they're all trash talking that they can beat me or I can beat them or whatever. And so everyone's trying to beat each other's times right now. Um, so that's the one I've been, uh, and that's what I was doing here before I got on the show is just grinding as hard as I could to, to beat my friend's time and um but yeah I, I love all the sims they all do really awesome things for the community in my opinion and uh they're all really a good entry way um for people to get into the, the hobby in a cheap affordable way that's fantastic so your so favorite, favorite setup, setup then obviously is, is what you're, what you're selling. selling so you're yes. you're running exactly what's at your store which again we'll link it for you later yeah but do you only race or do you freestyle also so i try and fr I, I, I attempt to freestyle. I am not good at it. I am not a very <laughs> creative person at all. Um, I, uh, so like my sister, she's the most like artistic, like creatively, she's so artistic and knows so much, can do so many really cool things with like paintings and whatnot. So I think she took all of those genes and I, I didn't get any of those. It's cause like I, I can't draw to save my life or like freestyle. Like it's just not my thing. Uh, but I really, I, I, I love doing it and I, I love going out and just flopping around and whatnot and uh, flying around my yard, chasing like cars and planes and whatnot. Um, here's a video of me racing, you'll see. Um, so this was the global qualifier track uh, for multi-GP this year. So this was like the TQ uh, run for that, um, for to qualify for nationals. So I obviously do racing a lot more than I do freestyle, um, but I, I really enjoy freestyle. I, I don't enjoy posting it as much. Um, because I, I don't think it's, uh, I'm not, I don't think it's very good. Um, but I, racing is definitely my, uh, something that I, I prefer just because I, I'm so competitive and like, like doing that. I love just, the the, the, the way it makes my heart beat and, uh, things like that about, um, just competing against other people and trying to get in their head and then trying to get in your head. And it, especially when money's on the line and stuff, like it all just makes, I just love that rush. And, um, Freestyle is fun and all, um, but I, I really, racing is really what I focus on uh, for the most part. I think you're too hard on yourself about your creativity because if you weren't creative, you wouldn't have a frame and motors and props and all That's the things true. you're working on. That's true. So don't be so hard on yourself. You've <laughs> achieved a lot more than most people have at your age or yeah, at our age or any age right now. Yeah. I challenge anybody to put this video that I was just watching on like a full screen and like concentrate on it as hard as you can because you will fall the fuck over. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so you won the 2018 and 2019 multi-GP, yes. but where's somewhere you haven't got to fly yet that you really wish you could fly? That is, and that's, I, I, I hate to say this, but like, I've, I've just been, I, I really can't, I don't know. Like uh, there, I've been so fortunate to be able to go to all these places and, through all these leagues and whatnot, whether it be DCL or DRL or multi-GP and stuff, I've been very fortunate to be able to go to more places than I could ever imagine or ask for. But like, it's just, I've gone to countries that I didn't even know existed. And just, it, it's been so crazy to be able to go to all these places and compete and do what I love as far just to, to race and do drone racing and to see all my friends at all these places is just so cool. Oh yeah, all right, I have one and it's Australia. There you I, go. I really want to go to Australia and like uh, um, 
BMS Thomas, you know, he's, he's one of my really good friends there. And, um, he's come to the U S multiple, multiple times for the races. He's beat me many, many times on U S soil. And, but I've never gotten to go over there, uh, to Australia and fly with him because he, he flies a lot. They have a really good, um, um, set up over there. And I would, so yeah, Australia somewhere I'd really like to go. I would like to time travel over there because I do not want to sit on the plane for however long that takes. Um, but yeah, Australia, probably number one on my list. Montana Pro Res FPV says, I've never been to Montana. I think my dad went there one time. Um, That's my country. Montana? Yeah. He, it's a I, country I now? For, uh, it's all country up here. Yeah. What <laughs> country? Yeah. My dad says he loved the Whiskey Warehouse race place. So that, yeah, that was in Cincinnati. Um, and yeah, and that was in this like abandoned warehouse. I guess it was abandoned. I'm not sure, but it was just really, really cool. This was like two years ago, I think. But it was at night, and it had all these lights in it. There were like multiple tracks, and it was like it, it really was probably one of the coolest races I've ever been to. So, yes, Dad, I, I do hope we can go um, go back there again. <laughs> my dad is sitting like literally like ten feet above me right now. I'm surprised right, he's not banging on the floor like yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so curious. And this has been some, it's been, actually, it's actually been a pretty big subject all over the internet right now, as far as, you know, uh, radios and multipolar protocol and all that stuff. Um, why do you, why do you use spectrum? So I've, um, and for anyone who's come from the plane side of things, um, spectrum is probably like one of the most popular, if not the most popular. Um, and they support a lot okay. of events. And I, especially from the business side now is, I understand that like it does cost money to support an event. So I love supporting the people who are supporting events back. So like at this last IO horizon hobby and spectrum had their own track and that, that costs money. And they've, they've been very supportive towards the FEV community, um, which, and I'm, I would love to support anyone who does that just because they're putting money into drone racing and helping support the community and grow it. Um, and that doesn't, it doesn't matter what company it is. If they're doing that, then I, uh, I feel that they have earned the right to be supported by me or anyone else. Um, but aside from that, obviously I want it to be a good product and they've been, uh, I've used their products. I have radios that are like 10 years old now that still work from them. And like they have low latency, it's reliable. And I know that everyone, there was like the scandal a long time ago about how the whole team fail safe thing. And <laughs> I, I'm just yeah. kidding. I'm just kidding. Um, but I, I, I'll tell people personally, like if I, I race, whatever is the absolute best. Like I, I refuse to take any, um, like I, I won't race anything unless it's the absolute best in my opinion and which I've had the be most best, the best luck with. And that's not to say that what I use is the absolute best. It's just what I've had the most uh, luck with. And so that's, that's what I use. And, um, I've had great luck with spectrum. I've had no issues and they've supported me back and I'm, I'm happy to support them. They support drone racing. They support me. And, uh, it's something that, yeah, I, I totally support a company like spectrum any day. They make great hardware. It's a bit on the expensive side for most people, especially compared to like the, the new yeah, trends. Yeah, we're not yeah, what, like 600 bucks. Yeah, the X twelve six hundred dollars. But in my opinion, and especially since I'm in planes and whatnot, it's you need the more channels for when you're flying planes and stuff. So, but at the end of the day, you do get what you pay for. In my opinion, like you get the amazing customer service at Horizon Hobby, and uh, just get like a great product that's well thought out. And um, uh, especially if you like fly planes and whatnot, like I was saying, yeah. the X twelve or something like that is something that I would recommend. Um, it does lead lead me into another question about it. Now, are you flying for the actual radio, like the actual uh, frequency and radio and the latency and everything? Or like in this picture here, I noticed, yeah. excuse me, uh, I flipped my yeah. thing around. Uh, yeah. I noticed that you have a crossfire on there, right? Yeah. yeah. So um, I obviously like I, I do have some like long range quads because uh, who doesn't like the long range and whatnot? Mm -hmm. um, and obviously and for DCL. Uh, we have uh, crossfire is required, and um, so I had to have it on there for that reason. Um, oh, but the crossfire is required with DRL, DCL, or DCL. Um, which, oh, so okay. DCL um, I did not know that. Yeah, so that and they uh, help with that or whatnot. Um, but for five inch racing, I do use the um, Spectrum protocol. So I use a Spectrum SRXL2 receiver. I have the let's see. 
you see these are my little 2.4 antennas that come off the, the mounts that are provided when you buy a frame at 533.com. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that was good. That was good. I like yeah, it. Yeah, I had to sneak it in. Um, so all TPU is provided when you buy the frame, just FYI. Um, but, yeah, so I have the little 2.4 antennas that come off there. I have no issues with range. Um, I have had amazing luck with Crossfire. Um, Crossfire has been something that obviously is tried and true in the FPV community. And PBS supports me as well. And they, especially the new Tango 2, the new Crossfire Shot protocol that just came out, they have done some really, really awesome things. And I, yeah, he's got the Tango 2. I don't have, it comes tomorrow. So, so what's um, going to happen when you try your dad's Tango 2 and you decide you want to use it instead of the other one? <laughs> that, that, I don't know. That, I, I'm sure I'll try it out on the sim and whatnot. And I'm sure that. He'll always try and dangle it in front of my face and tell me he has one and show me the folding gimbals. I can 100% guarantee Oh, so he went all, pro. All, oh, yes. He, my dad, he has to go pro. All he will do is just sit there and fold his gimbals down and ask if my radio does that. And unfortunately, the IX-12 does not do that, but I'm sure <laughs> he won't pester me over whether or not his does and mine doesn't. No, um, I will Your dad sounds you. awesome. Yeah. I will tell you right now, I, I, when I started out, I did start with Spectrum because – Everybody here is planes and everybody has DSM this and that and everything, you know. And my first radio was, uh, I believe, a DX6. And then I moved to a DX8, just thinking it might make a big difference. And it was the DX8 G2. And, I, and don't get me wrong. I absolutely freaking love the feel of the DX8 G2 in your hand. Yeah. But the plastic is great and all that stuff. Um but with all the but the the receivers and stuff, they were just too expensive for me at that time. Now they have come down ever since I've moved to like Crossfire and all that stuff. Yeah. But I, I can't I can't bash on on them at all. Yeah, exactly. And uh, the, and like I was saying, it's it's really a get what you pay for thing, and it's and that goes for anything in life is there you can pay the extra whatever dollar, and if you can't afford that and you have to go the cheaper route, then by all means go get the Tyrannus, use the Crossfire, whatever. And I totally support that. They make all make great, great products, and people use it. There's the DX6, DX8 DX for, um, but yeah, they're they're used in this industry for a reason, and that's because they make good products. So um, this was my first one. <laughs> oh, wow. We all start somewhere, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, they um, they all make great products, and just Spectrum is what I I choose to use. Um, but I, I can't harp on any other company <coughs> or anything they make just because. They're, they're working really, really hard to make such great products. And although they might not be perfect and nobody's product is ever perfect, that they're, they're really working hard to make it the best it can be. And like with the Tango 2, that's a new product that they improved on the Tango 1 and made it better. Now everyone loves this new radio. And like Tyrannus is always coming out with new Tyrannuses and um, same goes for Futaba, et cetera, just trying to make it more accessible to more people and just better in general. So, But Spectrum is what I choose to use. And, I'm sorry? The iX12 gimbals are amazing too. Oh yeah, exactly. And that's just so, I love, I'm a very gimbal picky person. I just love the iX12. Royal McKenzie wants to know if you've tried the DJI HD system yet. Yes, I have. So there's there's a Bardwell video on this. If, for those who don't know, I live like 30 minutes away from uh, Joshua Bardwell, um, and he brought out the. This was a few months ago. Um, so I'm sure that the system has improved since then, but I flew it and like the second you put this, these things on, it's just like, wow. It's like literally, it's seriously like looking through a GoPro and it's, it's so hard to explain, especially if you've flown like analog FPV that like to go from like seeing, we have a pretty good image, but to go from that to putting on what literally looks like a GoPro view, like it, it's crazy. Um, I flew it. I really, really like it. I, comparison, I, dude. I'm sorry. Or latency though for racers. Yeah, and that's that's what you'll hear in the video is um, it's it's variable. Like if it was a locked latency, which I think they've improved on this since I flew it, and I've heard that it has improved and more people are starting to like it. Um, um, the one when I flew it, the the latency was variable, and uh, that made it hard because if you think about it, like you're you're used to just you're putting a stick and put in, and you know exactly when it's going to happen because you're so used to it. Um, but with if there's variable latency that can change and that makes it really really hard to predict. Um, but now I think they've they've switched that. They like lowered the quality but made the uh, latency lock, which is great. So yeah, I have no complaints with the DJI system. They've I think they're doing really awesome stuff as far as they're bringing in. They have a huge social media and huge outreach with what they've done with phantoms and whatnot like that. 
and can bring those people into FPV with a super simple system like the air unit and like their controller and things like that. And Rotor Riot's obviously been pushing it. Um, so yeah, I think they're they're doing really awesome things. It might not be what I'm going to use for racing right now, but who knows? Maybe there'll be like a switchback HD in the future that can fit a DJI Air unit or something like that. And because we always want to we want to be with the uh, with the market. If DJI is becoming the new thing, they come out with an update. Everyone's like, wow, DJI is the thing I have to use. Then we'll definitely we want to keep up with the market and make sure that um, that everyone can use our stuff uh, no matter what um, products they're using. Um, so Hawkeye yeah. and I have a question for you. Okay. Who is your favorite pilot of all time? Um, that is a tough one. Um, I know if Tack's still in here, Tack is definitely among my, my top five. That's good because sure. he actually asked earlier if you're hiring. So there you go. Like you could work Perfect. with your favorite yes. pilot and right. he'd be happy too. Awesome. Yeah. So Tack, I, I love, and it's not necessarily like the, the best um, like pilot or whatever. It's, I really like I love a good personality and things where it's just enjoyable to watch because I think that's what's going to end up growing FEV is like the good personalities behind it, not necessarily like the cool flying because not many people can comprehend what actually is going on, how hard that is. But people like Johnny FPV and um, like the Rotor Riot crew, I think they're doing really awesome things because they're they're trying to to blend in the the um, like personality side to the tech side. Joshua Barbell is obviously doing awesome things, but yeah, just like any of those guys who are out there putting in the time to make those awesome videos, whether or not they're getting four views or 4,000 views or 400,000 views, I think those people are what's going to end up growing the hobby. Um, and yeah, so all those guys, I, I can't think of one personal favorite. I'd say uh, Night Fury is definitely among um, my, like my favorite. Um and just because he did so much for uh, racing in the beginning and continues to, um, but yeah, it's I, there's so many awesome pilots out there, and so many now are are continuing to grow their uh, social media and stuff and pushing the hobby uh, forward, which I, I I really appreciate. Who's your favorite in DRL? Oh man, um, that's a tough one. Speaking of DRL, that's when you're supposed I, to. That's I when you're supposed to. Dude, oh, it. that's pretty. It's all yeah, bright, yeah. shiny. I haven't even flown it yet. I think I powered it on one time, but I wanted to. It, let's. I can get it on stream now before it gets ultimately destroyed or broken. Yeah, give us a nice um, close up of it. Yeah, like that it is looks, pretty. Yeah, it is very, very nice. I love the. I didn't notice that they had this like dorsal fin out the back, which I think looks really, really cool. Um, but yeah, so I just got my racer four and like yesterday, I think. Um, but as far as my favorite pilot, ob uh, ooh. I'd say I'll, I'll go top three. I'll go. Uh, this is not in any particular order. So. You have <laughs> this is not in order. No Come one's on. gonna be offended. You gotta say who your favorite is, and then you can say who else your honorable mentions are. But you, you who's okay. your favorite? Okay, I'll go for number one most favorite of someone that I can go on the show and just say I'm excited to watch them fly, and that is Duncan Balsion. And he, he's the French pilot. He's like the white color. And uh, he is like the funniest guy because he like he has this really funny pose where he like holds the radio like this and like leans over and I just think it's hilarious. And then he's always like the loudest screamer. He's always like trash talking and he has this funny French accent like, oh, I just think it is absolutely hilarious. Um, so I'll go Duncan one and then I'll go – I'd say next most fun to watch is – oh, yeah, Fluxy. Well, I'll go Fluxy. I love how he trash talks with Vanover and whatnot because I unfortunately wasn't able to be on the show this year, so I felt like Fluxy did a great job handling that position. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and um, as far as the, the rest of them, I obviously I, – I know all of them personally, and Vanover, just because like, we've been, we've been competing with each other forever and – Seeing him on the show and whatnot is really, really awesome. Yeah, Jordan, Jet, like my dad said, I know Jet's my dad's favorite. Um, probably when I'm on the show, Jet will still probably be his favorite. Um, Nurk. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, they're, they're all really awesome people. And I think, uh, once again, like they're on the show for a reason, um, just because they're not only really awesome pilots, but um, they are really, really uh, awesome personalities and they're fun to watch. Um, so I, uh, I really, uh, I can't wait to, to watch them and to be on the same stage as them. I think it's going to be something that I'll never forget to, to go from seeing them on TV to, um, 
what's it called, to like flying with them right next to him. So like I think there was a quote from Vanover from one episode um, showing that he uh, was just like he had like an awe moment where he was sitting up on stage in the finals going uh, going against all these guys. Um, so yeah, I, I most likely will have one of those, and I, I'm super excited to be able to to go and travel with all those guys because they're just really awesome people. Like whether I get first place or last place, I think that it's just going to be a really awesome experience to hang out with all those guys. Um, so I'm super excited about that. Who's your favorite Canadian pilot in the race scene? Oh, right. Uh, comedian that, yeah. I, Canadian. <laughs> and I, I probably uh, listed that the same order as I would for favorite pilots. I love funny. I love laughing, laughing and smiling. I just, I love that. So definitely Duncan Fluxy, wild Willie's definitely up there. Um, he's just anyone who's out there to, they call, I remember um, Willie calling Vanover like Captain Sparkles or something and just screaming in his face about it. Um, and I just I just love that. So definitely those three guys are just absolutely hilarious on the show. Um, so I can't wait to be sitting there. They'll probably be screaming at me for mid-airing them or whatever I end up doing. So I'm excited to, uh, to be behind that. Do you know of any of the Canadians though? Oh, Canadians. That are up and coming. Oh, yes. Yeah. So, of course, we have uh, Bull FPV. Um, he is obviously very well known in the racing industry. Um, but there's so He's a I nice love, guy, too. I've actually, oh, yeah. One of and his dad, both his whole family are just really awesome people. And I, I, I seriously can't recall a Canadian that I didn't enjoy hanging out with. And um, so, yeah, Bull and his dad, uh, Paco might be in here. Uh, I know I met him on the Korea trip. Um, and there's just so many awesome people, especially like the Canadian guys are all so funny and fun to hang out with. Um, they, like somebody said earlier in here that they just bought, they bought like 26 switchbacks. And yeah, it's, so like, Kimbo hangs out with Bull. They're all in the same little yeah. rat race group. Yeah. And they, so obviously that's a huge support to me. So I love them for uh, supporting me like that. And um, they, I'm, I'm happy to support them however I can. They've just been a really, really awesome people to hang out with. That's awesome. <sighs> I know. Sorry, we gotta let you take a break here. Like, yeah, yeah I'm like almost out of breath. <laughs> it's good though. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Kimbo says Bull is the Canadian Iron Man. He is. Yeah, Bull definitely is someone I always have to watch out for. Uh, anywhere we go is um, is just he is always hot on my heels. Or it, I'm hot on his heels because he's always sending as absolutely as hard as he can. I love hearing his dad talk to him about his race strategy. Usually the words send it are involved in some sentence. Um, um, and yeah, so I love watching Bull fly. He's always pushing as hard as he absolute can. And uh, yeah, the, all the Canadians are just awesome, awesome people. And especially Bull. He, like, as that person said, that he just dominates over in Canada. So it's really awesome to uh, see him doing that. So it's like an hour in now. And we got another request for you to throw that quad and see how durable it is. Ooh, and you did quad. say later. I did say, let's see. I feel like it'd be hard to get in view. You don't have to like whip it, but like if you can angle your screen somehow so Come you on, can if just you, throw if it. If you're gonna throw a quad, you gotta throw a quad. You can ask uh, Thomas over there. I yeah. I drop kicked my quad. Really? We racing one time. Oh yeah, I was so ticked. <laughs> All right, we're gonna do a drop test here. People wanna see you like, th yeah, no, they're like, throw it, throw it, smash it, okay. throw it. <laughs> I feel like I'm watching like an iPhone drop test as like a small kid. So <laughs> yes. right. we're going to start with a corner drop as we would with an iPhone. So, all right, that was one. <laughs> Nothing broken. All right. So now we're going to get a little bit more no aggressive. No delamination or anything. No, yeah, yeah. We, we do a flex test. No, no flex. <laughs> Still good. Now we're going to do it on the side. So we're going to, we'll, we'll put some. You got to go a little higher up, I think. Okay, I think yeah, that's not, out of frame. Too I, I can okay, go out of frame. Just out of frame, or it could be way, way up. So we'll we'll do just above frame. Well, this is chest height. I'm six foot tall, so chest height side drop. You are a freaking tall, sixteen year old. Jesus. <laughs> all right, so it's still good. No flex, as you can tell. Still. So I think. All right, the last one we're gonna do right upside down. So hopefully the turtle fin saves it. Well, I'll I'll put some force into this one. So here we go. That was a good one. That was much. I'll accept that instead of chucking okay. it at a wall. And it still survived. So there's a durability test for you guys. All good. Very nice. Very nice. Oh, boy. Seth thinks you're going to make people cry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm over here just like, why are we doing this? <laughs> oh, I got That's okay. 608 says if it hasn't stuck in the drywall, you didn't do it right. <laughs> uh, 
Yeah, I'll have to find some drywall. I'll try it. No, later. you don't have to throw it at all. I think that last drop was fair. That was a good, you could hear that drop. So clearly it's a durable frame, which is of course. awesome. Yeah, that's definitely something we took in mind. I'm going to go buy some <laughs> grab the drywall now. Yeah. So just, you know what? That helps sell me on your stuff, honestly. I if think it'll help exactly, a lot of people. If I'm willing to drop it on a live stream, like if it broke, I couldn't have done anything about it. So that's <laughs> No, you could you would have had to be like, ah, this one's would really you just old. yourself? <laughs> yeah. She's like, oh. Like me yeah. earlier, I was I was going live with the new radio and I was fucking it up. I had to ch change all the channel maps and everything. And I was yeah. like, how the fuck do you do this? And I'm like, yeah. ah, now I look like an idiot with the brand new remote. And well, yeah. drop tests are important. I mean, Stingy already did one for you. Yeah, TBS, exactly. So. I was about to go back to that. It's like <laughs> right. on the live stream with his brand new Tango 2, showing it off, drops it. Um, I, I think it survived as well. Just oh, kidding. Just good kidding. Good oh my God, Jake. <laughs> I was like, there's no way this guy's going to fanboy so hard and then throw his remote at the ground. <laughs> It should be durable, though. I mean, we it remotes should. get dropped. Like, what if you have a vertical I'm, moment and you just... I mean, they don't give you an neck strap, so... It doesn't feel like it's going to be that durable. It doesn't feel like it's going to be that durable. If there's ever a 533 radio, I will drop test it on stream. Oh, uh, uh, does that mean you're going to work on one now? No, it doesn't. Do. <laughs> but if, if... If, if it happens, you have to come back to this live stream. I promise. I promise. This will be no more Rollins shit. It you gotta come back to us. <laughs> yes, I know. I, I, I promise this will be the first one it gets drop tested on. I love it. This is great. <laughs> Let's see. Do, if anyone has any questions for you guys, please, please ask. Six oh eight wants to know if Jake also has some uh, TBS undies on. <laughs> oh. Ooh. You know what? I'm gonna have to ask uh, or Trappy to get know, on that. Suggest, that uh, suggest, suggest it to Trappy. That's so funny. Corey brings up a good point, though. You drop a QX7 or any of the other remotes, you break a switch. At least with the new tank, that, you don't. That is one thing that I say. I think that they really did right on here. There's no switches to break. I'm leery of the antenna, though, with the hinge. I feel like you hit that hinge wrong, and it might snap. You you can put the SMA adapter on there. Ah, oh, so right. see, I didn't know that. Uh oh, I feel like he's going to get something really cool that we haven't seen yet. Let's see. I think he was talking about a battery charger earlier. Oh, yeah. I've been wanting to make one of those forever, if that's what I think it is. We need a new one. I was just talking to Chronix about that because I'm like, I have 15 batteries, and we only have three chargers, and he has a ton of batteries, and this is just not enough. Oh, this is neat. All right. What is that? Okay. I'm about to find an outlet. So that is a battery case. Battery, I, this is a case I got recently, and it's from a uh, company called Hero RC. So they do these like crazy battery cases for like these crazy like people who want all these amazing like chargers and all lit up. So this is definitely a little over the top per se. However, I think we'll we'll go a, we'll give a little preview. So right up front, we have the heads up FPV little logo. We have his logo on the back. We have, through this whole case, we have 18 USB ports. What? Eight, 18. Um, wow. So we have, let's see, we have five on the side here. We have the little intake fan. We have the outtake fans on the other, or the out fans on the other side. Two more here. We have a, I can't get this in the frame, but I have two retractable iPhone chargers. So <laughs> if you want, if your friend needs a, uh, a charger. But not Samsung, just Apple? No, wait, 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 but there's more. You just okay. pop off. Oh, but there's more. You just pop off the little that's thing. That's awesome. No, that's so super awesome. You can just pull them out, and then you, they retract right back <laughs> in, right from the outside of the case, which is super cool. And then, let's see. I'll open it up. So I'll do like a, I'll turn it on so it does look pretty cool now. Okay, that's dope. Yes, yeah, so I we like have that. Four. Let's see. Are those eye chargers? Those are the Hodas, the Hoda D6 Pros. So we have all these, as you can see, ooh, that was bad. Uh, <laughs> um, we have like my switchback here. So this is an actual picture of the switchback. And he like got it made into this plate. He has the Hoda logo. We have all these, I think there's like 300 different lights in here. And yeah, it's absolutely crazy. And I'm gonna feel like the coolest person ever at the race charging my batteries on this like disco globe. Um, yeah, but that yeah, is somebody who's gonna have mad light leak underneath their goggles and it's yeah. gonna be <laughs> yeah I'm blind competition. There. There's um I'm gonna set this over here. There's two power supplies in it. 
that have that can go up to like 1700 watts which is like ridiculous um Dang. so i can like um charge everyone's batteries at the field that's um, amazing yeah. thomas yeah. is over here like take my money <laughs> yeah really yeah. like how much k okay. Now you might not have had to pay for this, but like, how much do you know the approximate cost? So of those? this was a a sponsor, a, a, well, yeah, sponsorship type deal. I'd say is uh, okay. so Hoda. So there's four Hoda D6 chargers in there, and those go for hundred twenty dollars a piece, I think. Um, and then Blake, obviously, he's over the guy over at Hero RC, um, and he uh, spent a lot of time and uh, making that because obviously, like, he had to get all those pl the plexiglass cut the I think the case alone, just like the, not including the glass or the anything like that, just like if you want to go buy this Pelican case, it's like three, like a $300 Pelican case. Um, and then I think he said, if you were to buy this one, cause this one has all the bells and whistles. Uh, it's got like all the fans. It has a power supply that can like shut down a house breaker that can do like 1700 Watts. And I think he'd say it was like $2,000 if you were to, um, to buy it. Wow. However, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, all these people are like selling their kidneys right now. Yeah, I guess I was so, like, my kidneys in the mail. Send me it. Yeah. However, he, you obviously don't need four Hoda D6 chargers or whatever, and all these fancy lights and a retractable charger, and I can change the lights like to music with my phone and like all these crazy things that aren't necessarily like what I needed, but they're really cool. Um, but he definitely does cheaper cases around the like the four to five hundred dollar range. <laughs> um, Never mind. <laughs> Um, and I, I'm sure you, if you tell him you want a bone stock case, I'm sure you can get it down to whatever price. Yeah, you. tax like nope, never mind. Hawkeye's yeah. like, well, my taxes just came in. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, he does all kinds of customization, and yeah, he's he did all. He, he, he oh my gosh, he worked with me a lot um, to get it uh, exactly how I wanted it, and um, yeah, I obviously checked every single box. But I mean, it's just like uh, like buying a car. You can get the baseline model that's it's still really nice. And then you can just keep checking boxes and it gets expensive quick. Um, but yeah, you can definitely hit them up if you want something like that with just like one Hoda in there or one whatever charge you have. You can do whatever charge you want because um, I think it looks really cool because like nobody can go to a race. You turn on your charger and not stop and ask you about it because it just does look that cool. That's awesome. Sorry, I got distracted a little bit by Six Away's hilarious idea to make daily TBS undershirt socks and undies <laughs> one bag a day. Just go grab it and go. <laughs> That's really neat. So how much time are you spending on your Sims and in real life practicing? Like, what are your timing? So most people think I spend way more time than I actually do. Um, obviously now with like the business and the um, with school, I, I'm, I stay very busy. It's like I, I don't have time to, because I know Vanover, he, he flies a ridiculous amount as well as Min Chan, things like that. And they, they obviously, it shows on the track. They're really, really awesome guys. Um, I'd say I can't, the last time I flew a quad was like a week or two ago. Um, and so, I, I mean, I don't fly that often really. It's like, and a lot of people ask me like, what's the best way to improve? Like I'm flying a hundred batteries a day, just like Captain Vanover is how come I'm not the best there's ever been. And I think a lot of, and you don't want it to be a job. And that's what I want it to be is like, this is something that I love and enjoy doing. And I think that if I can uh, make it fun to where I fly when I want to fly and I don't fly because, oh, if I don't fly today, I'm not going to be able to beat XX and X person. Um, I fly when I want to fly, and then that makes me better than if I were to just fly 10 batteries a day, 10 batteries a day, like that. And as far as the simming side, I, I enjoy competition. So I anytime there's a race comp or a uh, competition on the sim, I love trying to get into those and just race with my friends. And that's a fun way for me to practice, and it doesn't feel like a job. Like that is hours of stick time that I can get real race practice, but it's not me out there flying alone in my backyard, <laughs> crashing my quad, breaking my quad and things like that. Um, so it's something I really enjoy as far as that side, just because I get to compete with my friends. We all get on discord, talk crap to each other, beat each other's lap times and stuff. And it just makes it more fun. And I think that's the best way to improve because um, if for those who haven't got into racing really, and we're trying to get better all the time, it's you, you want it to be fun all the time because if it's not fun, you'll get burned out. We'll take a break. Everyone will keep getting better and then you'll be behind. So I think it's better to slowly 
uh, gradually get better. And if you're having fun while practicing, then you will improve way more than if you practice 100 times more and you're not having fun. So um, I know I'll have to practice a lot with the Racer 4. Um, I, was gonna, I was just about to ask, how hard yeah, do you think so it's going to be definitely gonna be going a different, to that spec racer? Yeah, different practice than like with the 5-inch because I've flown 5-inch for so long. Um, but I'll definitely have to get used to that. So, And then, of course, I think it's going to be super fun to fly the Racer 4 just because how big it is, how cool it sounds and things like that. So I don't think it'll be a problem to have fun flying it. And like I said, as long as I'm having fun doing it, I am. I can always improve. And as long as I'm improving, having fun, like that, I, I just can't ask for any more than that. So um, I need to find one to play with, just to play with. Yeah, exactly. And I, like I said, I haven't flown it, and it's been at my house for like two days, and I've kind of just been like spinning the motors and like pressing all the buttons and plugging it in, and watch the lights turn on or whatever. And um, yeah, it's. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Um, but yeah, that's, that's the, the, I'm sure that practicing for DRL will be, uh, a different experience because I know that the, uh, racer for real life is race for DRL sim thoughts. So I will tell you once I've flown my racer for, like I said, I haven't flown it yet. I flew Vanovers, uh, I think about eight months ago in Buffalo, New York for like 30 seconds before I crashed it and broke it. And I don't think he was very happy about that. Um, <laughs> well, cause he, I wanted to beat his lap time and I said a good one. I was like, Oh man, this is because I was, I was there flying five inch and he was there commentating. So he wasn't even flying. Um, but I was all like geared up on five inch flying that. And I went straight to, um, what's it called straight to the racer four, and it was just super hard. Um, so I did crash it. But as far as what I know from the short experience I do have in the racer four and what I've flown in the DRL sim, I really do think they're really similar. Um, like, as far as like the power, like they, it might feel super slow in the sim, but like this is a like a beast of a quad. It is like uh, I compare it to like a tractor. Like it has a ton of torque, and it's literally just like a flying tractor. So it's like respect racing, really bright, sparkly tractors around the course. Um, but so, it makes racing close, and I think it, it. You can see it in the sim now. Like the quads might be slower, but they're super super close. So what's your goal for twenty twenty? That <laughs> that's a loaded question, I'd say. Um, I'm I'll, giving you all of those tonight. <laughs> yeah, that is. So I have a lot of goals for 2020. Um, obviously, I'll be in the DRL, and that is going to be. I'm going to be flying against Vanover and Jet and Nurk and all those guys in the DRL on the the big stage. I guess I'd say. I know there's going to be a lot of live events. Um, that people are going to be there, so there's going to be live, live broadcasting, things like that. I don't know if it's going to be live broadcasting, but I know it's going to be a live event like they had this last year. And that'll be I, – I don't know what to expect from that. I know I'm going to train as hard as I can to do the best I can at those races, but I obviously would love to win DRL. Do I expect to do that? No. Like I, My expectations are low, and I, if I beat those, that's great. If I don't, then I have my expectations low at the beginning. But um, – I would love, to love, love to win DRL or just even podium, just to be able to stand on the podium with all those really awesome guys, I think would be, uh, it'd, it'd be a dream come true, seriously. And uh, I would love to do well as far as five inch racing. Um, obviously, everyone's going to be watching me when the, the multi GP nationals come around or multi GP champs come around again. And I, I, I guess you could say I would like to go to Australia for a race. Um, just, you know, small goals and stuff like that. And, um, I, I, I just love at the end of the day, whether I win every race or lose every race, I, I really just like going out and hanging out with all the awesome people that are in FEV because that's what makes FEV what it is in my opinion. Um, so yeah, I, I, uh, I have a, a, a lot of probably big goals that are really high expectations for myself and I'll do my best to, to reach those goals. Um, but yeah, I just, at the end of the day, as long as I'm having fun, um, continuing to do this, I'd love for 533 to continue. I'd love for us to come out with new products and things like that. Um, uh, yeah, I, I'd say right now, more than anything, my focus has been on 533 just because growing that business is like super important to me. And I, it's something that I felt like I've been able to help start, especially with Armando and we've done it all by ourselves. And it's like the, the amount of pride that I can have just to go and, um, pack these orders that people were chose to support me. It, it really means a lot to me. And I, I really appreciate all those people that, that uh, choose to do that when they can spend their money anywhere else. And they worked hard to get it is they can um, come and spend it at our store. And hopefully we give them a good product and a good customer experience. Um, so yeah, I just, there's so many things that I have focused on is on top of that at school, I have to 
I'm getting into college this year, which is just crazy to think to me that I'm, I'm going to be going to college in like a year and a half. So I have to apply for those. I have the ACTs coming up and like all these, so many Are big you things. Are going to college early then? No, it's this, um, like in, the, in junior, as a junior, you're supposed to be signing up for colleges and uh, applying and things like that. So I have to go do college visits, which is just, it's just so like intimidating to me because it's like a whole new chapter of the life. I mean, I'm only 16 right now. I turned 17, actually this month, um, like 20 days or something. But, um, and but yeah, it's going to be, I'm, it's going to be a, a big year for me. I'm sure a lot of things to our plan. Hopefully that those can, uh, can go through and be successful, but I, I'm super excited to, uh, to be able to have all these opportunities and I, I couldn't be happier uh, to have all these opportunities. That's awesome. That's awesome. I, think I think you're, you're way, way more, more mature, mature. And, and I wouldn't say intellectual, but I would definitely say you're way more mentally professional and advanced than I would have expected, honestly. Yeah. And I think you're way further ahead than a lot of people in this hobby. <laughs> And I don't think you're ever going to lose that because it sounds like your parents are awesome and they've really instilled some good stuff in you. So good on them for that too. Yeah. Yeah. My, I definitely cannot thank my parents and uh, all the people in general. Like I've, I've been in this hobby long enough to know, like, uh, and especially like my dad, he, he's been a huge like mentor for me. And this whole thing is like, especially like with sponsors, like as an eight year old kid, all the only thing I wanted was like a sponsor and whatnot. And there's, so many things like you can't just go ask for a sponsorship and things like that and like know how to treat a sponsor, how to treat other people and just things like that to where it doesn't matter if you're the best pilot or the worst pilot out there at the end of the day. Like if you are someone that someone's willing to cheer for and you have a business, then like they'll, they'll help support you. So I think that just your personal image for, and that's someone, something I look for when I sponsor pilots. It's like, I, I look for first their just what are they like in the community? Like, do they have a, a good outlook on the community and things like that? And, then after that, if they're a great pilot, that's a great bonus. Mm -hmm. um, but if they're positively affecting my sales and things like that, just because they're a good person, then I think that's someone that I'd like to support. Um, like Tack, for example, um, you know, he's he's an awesome guy, as you guys know. And uh, you are uh, adamant about it. <laughs> yeah, hey, he's watching. You know, if he if he stayed on, then uh, he he deserves the recognition. Um, I think he's still here. Yeah, awesome. But yeah, Tack's been an awesome. I I've met him a few times and. I've met his son as well. I, uh, his son is, uh, he is actually like a big like entrepreneur per se. He's done this YouTube channel, all kinds of stuff like that. Um, and so I really respect him and his dad both. They're really, really cool guys. That's How do you cool. feel about the new proposed FAA stuff? <laughs> that is an interesting one. Um, so it's really hard uh, to describe, I'd say, because I don't think many people, including myself, exactly know that much about like what it really means or what it really could be. Um, I, I really hope it doesn't go through. I hope that, and I know that um, with a community like this, we have a lot of really awesome people like Josh Bixler, for example, from Flight Test, Drew Camden from Rotor Riot. Um, a lot of people, really good people for the hobby are, are doing things to make sure it ends up as good as it can be. And I know that, that everyone's motivated by money at the end of the day and all these companies like Amazon, et cetera, like Domino's for delivering pizza are throwing all this money at the government to, to be able to have, to be able to fly and do all these really awesome things for like technology in the future. Um, but it, it can uh, end up hurting us, I'd say. So I really, I truly believe that um, the, all the, the community, like the awesome community we have in FEV as well as the, the great people we have, like the leaders in this community um, will, maybe not be able to completely stop this because I do I do think it's inevitable that drones will be started like start to be used for more commercial things um, and they, they do a great job they're they're inexpensive to use they're they're fast they're portable they're cheap and I think it's it, it could be really good for a lot of like even just like safety like delivering if somebody gets hurt they can have something like first aid supplies delivered almost instantly packages delivered to rural areas, things like that. I think it has a lot of positive things that it can bring, but I just, we just have to find the correct balance where the hobbyists can still have their fun and like where this is their job, like for myself or like Nurk or Jet, for example, like this is seriously their, their job. And um, it's very important that it, um, that they can still do what they love. Um, so I, 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 it's, it could be really bad, especially with the proposed, uh, 
rules. But I, like I was saying, I truly believe that um, that the the good that there will be some good that comes from it, as far as uh, the leaders that um, can push for things like this to to not happen and to to bargain with the FA per se um, to uh, make everyone happy and make sure that we can still have their fun, we can still have fun, and they can continue their technological advancements and things like that. Um, so hopefully it all works out. If it doesn't, I, uh, I have a video posted on my Instagram of me flying a toothpick, which is like this tiny little three inch quad from flight one. It weighs like 200 grams or something and it rips. Like it's, it's a blast to fly. I know Sean Taylor loves them. All the people from flight one um, really liking them. Um, so even if it all goes down and if your quad weighs more than 250 gram, it's illegal. I think that FPV will go on forever, um, whether or not we're flying tiny whoops or X class quads. So uh, I definitely, even though it could be bad overall, I think that the FPV community will still, the, the hardcore people will still stay. And that's the, the, the true core of FPV is like the people, the diehards. So uh, regardless, I'm super excited to see uh, where it goes. Um, and uh, it sounds like there's like a three year grace period even after they make their decision. And I'm sure that technology will advance in those three years because we've seen, like I was telling you about my first quad from three years ago about how just mind boggling that is that I would- Well now we have DJI, right? Yeah. Like the, the change of the HD versus yeah. analog, like everything, right? But exactly. And so in three years, who knows what technology will be like then and uh, only time <laughs> will tell. So we'll have to, uh, to see, I'm, uh, I'm hopeful, like I said, and I'm optimistic. Uh, but uh, yeah, I think that but those are my thoughts, and I, I'm not fully read up on it. Um, but th that's that's what I had to say. Text. Definitely read it. Go make your comments on it. Yes. There is an open comment period. Yeah. And I just shared Rotorite actually uh, before we went live posted a new video regarding the protest coming up, so mm -hmm. people should check out what you said about that. Awesome. And earlier in the stream, and I'll put again in our description the UFDA nonprofit links. I think we're gonna wrap it up here. Okay. It's been great. Unless anyone else has any other questions, we'll give them a few minutes to, cause there's a lag time of course. Yeah. While we're waiting, I have to say a shout out. I'm sure Jake's got his for TBS too, but I'm gonna start with this one. So Hydrone sent me one of his brand new stickers and it just came in the mail today. So thank you, my dude. It will go in my slap pile. And it's, I like how he did the metallic. I think it's kind of pretty. So. That just came today. So sweet hydrone, thank you for that. Let's see if anyone else has any. It looks like there's nothing too new. Do you have any other things you want to add in? Any shout outs? Don't worry about shamelessly plugging your, your thing. Go right for it. Yeah, yeah. So um I definitely just want to thank, and of course I can I can plug like five three three or whatever, but um I really would like to thank the people that just like made, were able to make that happen. So like, as far as like my parents and things like that, um, uh, obviously Armando, Matt Hill, who helped with the website and things like that. And so many things, so many, so much of this would not have been possible without um, the help of other people. And I, I definitely couldn't have done it alone. So I, I've been super, super lucky to, to kind of meet up with all the, like the right people per se. And uh, I'd like to just say thanks to like all my team, uh, my team pilots and things like that. I know I, I support them and I support them for reasons because I, I believe in what they're doing. They're doing really good things. Um, but yeah, just thanks for you guys for having me. And uh, I hope I can come on maybe someday in a year or five years, drop testing to 533 Radio if that ever happens. But uh, I think it would be great. Yeah. Thank you guys so much for having me. I know it was uh, a little late, especially with doing other podcasts and whatnot, but uh, I really do appreciate uh, the invite and uh, I hope I can come on uh, again soon. Definitely. And I'll be watching you in DRL for sure. Man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Everyone's going to be watching you for sure. But yes, Hoop, I will mention thanks to Rollins for promoting our channel. I think he felt guilty for stealing our guest this week. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so that's where we're going with that one. But no, no he lied. He, apparently he lied and cheated and tricked people by telling them you were giving away free product in our live stream. And yeah. so that's how people showed up, I guess, oh, wow. extra. Oh. So you guys can go uh, take that all up with Rollins. That's all yeah, on I him. He has lots of stuff for free. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you so much for coming on. And thank you, everyone, for joining us. We will be here again next week at 8 p.m. Eastern with J.R. Pellegrini. Uh, AKA I'm pretty sure Scarecrow FPV is his uh, tag. So as far as I know, unless it changes, we will be here with him next week. 
Thank you again, Evan. I really appreciate you making the time for us. Guys, make sure you check them out. We will have all of the links later in the description when YouTube lets us edit them. So please come back later. Make sure you're not missing out on his website. Go show him some love. Check out his frame. Clearly, it's very durable. Yeah. So, and otherwise, have a great night, everyone. Thanks for coming out.